Welcome back to the number one podcast in the world. We're your hosts, Chase Damore. And Gabrielle Moses. And today we got an interesting podcast. We're going to be talking a lot of the, these crazy dating stories, a little bit about my ex, uh, some stuff with Airbnb and travel, because there's a viral tweet going around right now, but this lady completely got screwed over, and many other things. Well, people love to hear about your ex, so do you want to start with that first? I think we'll roll into that a little bit. Okay, right? sorry, I got a little bit too excited. I'm a little bit scarred with this girl, man. This girl just doesn't learn her lesson. It's always something. People like the drama, though. They like the, you know, your trauma. Oh, my <laughs> days. Like, this girl is, like, insane. I never even, like, I'll get into it in a little bit later. But the first thing I want to talk about a little bit is traveling horror stories. Somebody like us. Are you looking at like me? Us, no. Oh, I thought you were about to blame something on me. Well, I got nothing to say to you. I'm just talking in general. Like, traveling can be a nightmare, especially yeah. when things don't work out in your favor. Oh, I goodness. recently was just scrolling through Twitter, and I think I sent you the tweet, where yes. this girl completely got screwed over a little bit by Airbnb. So I'm going to tell her story a little bit. So you, mm -hmm. you, you have it Yeah, I'll pull it up right now. And so basically, this girl took a trip. This girl took a trip, and, you know, she doesn't have a big following. But basically, she has 41 million views on this tweet. 41 million people watch this girl completely get screwed over by Airbnb. So obviously this is not sponsored because I'm going to tell you guys how it is, the raw, simple cut truth. And I've had some nightmarish stories with Airbnb as well. So I just want to forego you guys into forward thinking when you guys take these types of trips. So basically I'm going to read from the top of this tweet. This tweet by at sure as Mel um, basically starts the tweet with these two photographs of a messy hallway leading into her Airbnb. She states that, for a fun game, let's do a tour of the unit of Airbnb refuses to be the only way to get their attention because basically all they're doing is giving her automated responses. These photos are horrifying. There's garbage all over the stairway. It looks to be some sort of mold. There's uh, like bugs crawling all over the place. And you don't know what's going on. You have no idea. I would not like to put my head where there's bugs. Imagine you fly across however many hours. Say you flew to Europe or something, and that's like a 17-hour flight sometimes. That's like a once in a lifetime trip too exactly you get there it's like super late at night or early in the morning and you can't even go to sleep because the place that you looked at photos of is not the place that you thought you were staying what is your immediate reaction we're gonna get a hotel we're gonna go somewhere else right yeah. but you would think you would get your money back you would think trip protection trip protection that goes she goes on to say but wait Aaron B there's more when I left today I locked the door when I got back it was unlocked one of the screws was missing from the deadbolt the host is naturally suggesting that I'm too stupid to lock a door properly despite locking it 10 times before so basically the next photo is this girl taking the bolt that goes into the deadbolt and showing it in her hand so that means that somebody while she was trying to stay in this messy Airbnb went into her home so she also got robbed yeah she's not possibly. safe inside of this Airbnb now that's already the second red flag at that point if you're still there you're just you know it's a meme to yourself piling on to the next thing when I first got here there was a small cockroach in the kitchen I killed it which was ev evidently my mistake because Airbnb help wanted proof since I I've killed two more and one got away. Here's your proof. So she's killed two cockroaches. She's That's your little friend. Ex yeah, my friend. Speaking <laughs> of cockroaches. But it's like, now you're in this Airbnb. You're telling them that you're not safe because somebody broke in. It's messy scrub and there's cockroaches going around. And Airbnb wants proof outside of the messy hallways, outside of the screw that's in your hand. And now one of the cockroaches got away. So she had to take a photo of it. And she has this nice little video of the cockroach crawling all over the place. Oh my God. She goes on to then say, but it's not just the roaches. We also have rodents, mouse droppings, and general filth in between the fridge, the cabinets. In case you think there's a chance it could be anything else, think again. So they found mouse droppings, oh. mice in traps, cockroaches everywhere, the deadbolt's missing a lock, it's a complete mess, and she has nowhere else to go on Airbnb. Has Airbnb responded to this tweet? They Yes, she does. That's the very oh. next thing. So fun fact, before you accuse me of snooping Airbnb, because Airbnb is now saying that she was snooping inside the Airbnb that she was paying for, I opened the cabinet trying to see what was going on with the hot water after it lasted just long enough to wash another roach down the drain. Guess how Airbnb responded to that problem? They said, is there any way that you can send us documentation to support that the hot water isn't working? How in the hell are you sending... You're supposed to grab a thermometer, put it under the water, and document, take a video. Documentation, Gab, that the hot water is not working. Like, how do you even prove that, right? She goes, how would I document that? 
And she goes, of course, hot water isn't the only water problem. It's raining tonight. Dear Airbnb. So naturally, the ceiling is now leaking. So now not only does she have roaches, mice, a deadbolt that doesn't lock. She stayed, though. She, she Through you know, the night. She, prepared, she had nowhere else to go. So now she has a cup with a leaking ceiling catching all the water, sent, filming all of this, sending it to Airbnb. And she goes... Why keep all the fun in the front room? Let's take a walk to the bathroom. The oh, it's ba- not done yet. It's not done. It just keeps going. It's not done. So in the bathroom, she takes photos. Uh, it's a broken towel rack, a broken faucet with rust around the drain, some mold up by the air vent, and leaking in the bathroom as well. So now she's staying in, the, it sounds like she's staying in a Motel 6, not an Airbnb at this point. She goes, so for recap, Roaches and rodents and water and filth, possibly breaking and entering. Oh my, but not apparently. Oh my, not enough for Airbnb to help uh, or give a rat's ass about her opinion. Because this was Airbnb's response. Listen to this. After all that she's gone through, he goes, Hi, Melina. We are saddened to hear that you were saddened to hear. <laughs> This is unfortunate, but we're sad. Right. We're sad to hear that you had this experience and we hope that you do not let it discourage you. I can't imagine how disappointed you must be that you are unable to make this trip. As a net, as a neutral third party not present during the reservation, we must make a fair decision based on the documentation and communication from both the host and the guest. After currently reviewing your claim, is not enough evidence for a refund. Not this enough is, evidence. Yeah, this what? is host discretion, and she allowed if she allows a refund. To learn more about these grounds and rules, host, check out the Help Center article. We know that this is not the outcome that you were expecting, but please understand that we wanted to make sure that we are always aligned of our policies at Airbnb. Thanks for your understanding. But it was actually so much worse than this. And here's a saga about reaching out to Airbnb about this was like. At 5 p.m., she checked and immediately noticed the furniture is in a different from the pictures. No couch. And, but a crappy futon instead. We like to give her, the host the benefit of the doubt because she tries to not be an asshole. Usually naive, clearly, but then I noticed that the heat doesn't seem to be working either. So now the heat doesn't work. I reached out to the host who sends a handyman. He removes the HVAC filter that is black. For those of you that don't know, HVAC is supposed to clean your air so you can live in a place. It's black, so that means it's covered in smoke, such whatever yeah like concerning long of a lifelong uh chain smoker it's that black at 6 p.m she hasn't even seen the roaches yet and decides to make din- dinner she says should i have mentioned that i have booked this place for a month in advance yeah oh, no. the stove has four mismatched knobs none of which are pointing the same way they turn the gas on, but don't turn off so easy. So now she can't even turn off the gas. So that's already a health concern. Uh, I contact the host again in a bit of a panic. The gas is off, I think, but the place sure smells like gas. So she she's one match away from from just blowing up from blowing up, joining uh, a crispy uh, uh, guest like the black uh, HVAC. Um, she asked me to come downstairs and look at a different unit with a working stove. Sus, yes. At 7 p.m., back in the unit, guard is up. When the first roach shows itself, I smash it and toss it since the same person does with a roach, right? Wrong. Obviously, you stop and take a picture first. At least you do according to Airbnb help. So about 7.30, I reached out to Airbnb, explained the situation. They tell me they need to reach out to the host first Wait. and they'll be back in touch within an hour. Where's the reviews from like past people that stay? there like That's if it also, was this terrible why were there not like reviews like one star reviews because people you can bot reviews i'm sure yeah but like you know how on airbnb you're like a verified host or whatever or you're a super host That's why true. would you not look for that why would you stay somewhere with no reviews like the cheapest place ever like yeah <laughs> well anyways to continue what she says they tell me that they need to to be in touch within an hour. They're not. I wait, decide to take a shower. Wrong move. There's a roach waiting for me in the tub. I drown him. I drown him. <laughs> but this is also apparently the wrong move because according to Airbnb ethos, what you're obviously supposed to do when you're naked and under ra- running water is whip out your phone from where? Afraid to ask. <laughs> and document the situation. Okay, my bad. We've already covered the hot water, so we'll skip to that part. We'll skip that part. By now it's 11. I finally call Airbnb help because I... It's just one affront too many. Little did I know how many affronts were left in store. I tip my hat to you, Airbnb. I underestimated your sadism hugely. (laughs) Sadism, crazy. 
She goes, I got someone named Jennifer M on the phone. She asked for evidence, which I dully provide, except for the hot water, which she tells me never did tell me how to document, which she never did tell me how to document. I tell her I have to go to bed and she says she'll work on the issue overnight and update the chat. Then she goes into the Airbnb help. She says, can you please inform the host on the message thread so that the host can fix the issue on real time? She goes, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what you mean. I was under the impression you were communicating with the host to try to resolve the situation. Am I speaking to the same person? Airbnb goes, as the issue can be fixed by the host so that host can instruct you, instruct which way to turn the knob. And Melly goes, what on earth are you talking about? Please read this entire thread. The hot water, I assume what you're talking about here, is the only one small problem with this nightmare situation with Airbnb. After a little more flirty back and forth, this person ghosts me. So I get on the phone again, and finally, finally, someone seems prepared to help. She makes all the right sympathetic noises and says she can offer that my a refund, but only if I check out by 11 per the host policy. It's now nine, so I bust my ass, packing up a month's worth of belongings and a whole load of groceries. I don't have my car because the host completely misinterpreted the parking situation. That was the prequel, I spared you. <laughs> Forcing my partner to drop everything and come get me. Now this support person who promises me a refund also promised me she'd get back in touch within an hour. Guess what? An hour comes and goes. I send 15 messages and nobody replies. At 1140, someone calls me back immediately and hangs up. So I, the more fool I call Airbnb again, I spend two more hours on the phone with different reps who are not any of the first five reps I spoke to telling me that they have no idea who promised me a refund, even though they recorded the call and gave them a timestamp. I provided additional evidence and the month or 10th person I've talk to says they'll review the situation and get back to me within a, with a decision. The decision is that I don't qualify for air cover or a refund. And in so many words, I can go fuck myself. Gosh. When I push back the sheer disbelief, this is the response Airbnb sent. This is what Airbnb said, Gab. Hello, Melanie. Good day. I hope this message finds you well. My sincere apologies for the delay response of your recent inquiry. As an Airbnb admin, we have been experiencing an unpredicted volume of inquiries, and we regret the inconvenience this may have caused. We understand the improvements of your concerns, the importance of your concerns, and we appreciate your patience as we work diligently to address each inquiry with the attention it deserves. Our team is actively working on this to streamline our process to ensure a more timely future response. I would have just left and then gotten a lawyer involved. It's like, what? You oh, she's spent the night? Yeah, she's almost done. She goes, because I don't have $2,500, yes, that's how much I'm paying for the privilege of living here for a month, I just lit, I just lit it on fire to go stay somewhere else. I had to move back in... I had to move back in the day after I moved in and back out because that's what they told me to do. All this, by the by the way, in a third floor walk up on a broken ankle. She's walking up to the third floor with a broken ankle. Then came today, then came the deadful, the mice, the leaking ceiling, the roaches, the time live from the scene and caught on camera, and who knows what whores away. I've messaged the host, they're not responding, I'm calling support is worse than useless so here we are thank you for all going on this journey with me and i discourage any of you for ever booking airbnb then at least i achieved something i want to know how much a night this was twenty five hundred dollars for a full like month i wonder where the location is well i'm glad that she had 42 million people view that entire story and we're giving it to our audience here today and like Listen, I know that was a lot of information to take in, but all of you people who look for Airbnbs for a cheaper place to stay, Airbnb needs massive improvement. They need massive work on their system. I've had horror stories. Gab has had horror stories. This is just one of the many things that happens within like these corrupt universes. I mean, they're in the business to make money, though. It's kind of the host fault. It's not even the but host Airbnb fault. should have a lot better like support and whatnot. But that's why you do super hosts. That's why you look at all the reviews and whatnot. You know. I just feel like in situations like that, they should, because they're an organization running, um, they're facilitating these people to put their homes on auction for Airbnb, that they should also have access to be able to provide more um, customer satisfaction. Because, you know, it's the oldest saying in any sales 
uh, in anything is the customer's mostly always right. And in situations where you don't have hot water, you have a gas leak, you have mold, you have heat, you have bugs, you have mice. It's not a suitable place to live. If the if, it's not even livable. Yeah. If 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 the health department wouldn't let you live there, then Airbnb should have some sort of mandated thing to where they can refund you your money. You'd think they would, but again, they're in the business to make money. Right. <laughs> so of course they don't. But think about it like this: like you and I are going to buy uh, our separate homes and Airbnb them out as a uh, as a, a way to make passive income, correct? Mm -hmm. So now, if people such as Airbnb are um, doing things like this, for example, uh, this is happening to people who are booking through Airbnb. It makes people less likely to book on Airbnb, right? Yeah, that's that why use VRBO then. There's like other options. Oh, okay, but Turkey. okay, Gab, but that's it's not an argument, Gab. I'm just saying if we have a house on fucking Airbnb, it's probably not going to do that well if people aren't going to go to Airbnb and can't get help. Yeah. I don't know why you're justifying a company that's not I'm helping a person. I'm playing you're not playing advocate. devil's advocate because you're the first person who would see a bug and not and stay in the hose. Yeah. So how can you say, oh, it's not Airbnb's fault? That's just so inconsiderate. That's well, inconsiderate. I'm just playing devil's advocate. You're not playing devil's advocate. You're being inconsiderate to the people that can't afford $2,500 to blow off on an Airbnb. No, that's, I know. That's it's... very posh, Gab. Well, I'm just saying it's wrong of them to not have good, adequate customer service. Like, if you're a multi-billion dollar company, like, you should be able to do a you little bit You just said it was the host and the customer's fault. If I you spent $2,500, let's just say you make way more than $2,500. If you spent $2,500, you would be mad. So imagine if you made $4,000 a month and you spent yeah. half of that on an Airbnb that was not suffice. No, I'd How are you so going to say it's their fault? <laughs> Saying, you I'd just be, said that. I'd be pissed. I would be so mad. You but just I'm said saying, I'm playing devil's advocate and it's their fault. I'm saying they should look at. No, are you changing it now because you don't want to get your butt I've canceled? Been saying, oh my gosh, yeah. I've been saying this the entire right. time. Look and see if they're a super host. Look at other reviews. Like, yeah, everybody just rewind the podcast. So that's what I Insert I've great saying. clip you here of her listening. saying it's your fault. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you weren't listening to me. That's what I said. This entire time, I said... What is the definition of a devil's advocate? I'm speaking on... For the, the worst half. half. Yeah. So you were speaking on behalf of Airbnb. No, not necessarily. I'm just saying, if you're booking a place... What is a devil's advocate? You're playing the side that people might not like. That's so the, who is the side oh that people God. might not like here? Airbnb. So what were you just saying you were doing? I was literally saying on Airbnb's behalf. I'm so glad this oh whole conversation God. is recorded me too, because you're trying to like change. You're it. not listening. To me. No, you're trying to turn it on me. You're literally <laughs> saying Airbnb is in the right. I did not say that. I just said they need to have. Better that is a terrible stuff. opinion. I don't care what your little gab gang and your fans want to say. Oh my gosh! I heard what you said. The rest of the world heard what you said. I said don't try to turn it on me. You literally just said, you literally, now you said that, yes, but like five minutes ago, you literally said, at the same time, they're in the business to make money, so it's not really on them that so, there's yeah, roaches no, in a gas leak. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. They're in the business to make money, so I'm not surprised that they have bad... Like, and then I say, service. what about people who buy homes to try to put on Airbnb for their passive income, and you said, well, they're going to have to go to a different app. Well, yeah, I'm saying if Airbnb is not doing as well because of the blowout from this... There's other options. Too. Oh, we're just you gonna have to know. agree to disagree on that because that's a very insensitive take. Ah, okay, okay. That's an insensitive take. Just because you make enough money where you that's can spend twenty five hundred dollars and be fine with saying. it does not like that's an insensitive take. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. I didn't say anything about that. Did you? I was or, just saying okay. that there's other options. I'm gonna ask you this question: Did you or did you not say it's a yes or no? So don't give me a whole gab response. Did you or did you not say I'm gonna play devil's advocate? Yes. Okay. So, and do you or do you not understand what a devil's advocate is? I do. So how can you say you did not support Airbnb in this if you're saying I'm also the devil's advocate? I'm not listening to what I'm saying. No, I'm saying that I'm not surprised that they had bad customer service because they're in the game to make money no matter what. And then I said also on the customer's behalf, like... Airbnb should have better customer service. Like, I'd be pissed if I spent $2,500 for a place to live for a full month and it had roaches, it had mold, it had leaky ceilings, it had gas that didn't work. I'd be so mad. So, That's you're, what I said. so your solution for that is to go to a different app? Well, I'm saying if you're a person who's putting your home on Airbnb's website 
And now because of this whole situation, since 41 million people viewed that, I'm saying there's other options as well. So you don't agree that I have my opinion of saying that I think that Airbnb should have the ability to refund that person's money? No, 100%. They should have refunded them. I was never arguing yes, you with were. you. No, I wasn't. You were arguing. I'm gonna. With I'm me. gonna be the one editing I can't this podcast. Wait to rewatch this. I'm gonna be the one editing this. Be like Chase, you literally were not listening. No, you filter. Look, that's your. Please, also- guys, comment below <laughs> if I was arguing with Chase because I was not. <laughs> Anyways, what were you saying? Are you done? Yes. Okay, now that you've got all that out, so your five comments of the people that say, like, I interrupt you, I don't really care about that. What I'm saying is I'm not ever going to take your insensitive side on a subject that costs somebody $2,500. And you can edit that out all you want, and I'll edit it back in, and I'll say, Gab, you're wrong. That's wrong. And it's not funny. I don't find it funny. I would hate if I only made $4,000 a month and I spent twenty five hundred. dollars Oh, my gosh. I said I would be so mad, too. Okay, we're just going to pretend you didn't say I'm devil's advocate. Yeah, you, you can't, like, I'm sitting here having a conversation with you. I know, but I was saying I was being devil's advocate about, like, them being in the business to make money, so I'm not surprised that they didn't help her and that it was a big loop around and that it was going person We're just going to have to agree to disagree. Change the subject. Do you guys ever have trouble getting it up in the bedroom? Do you guys ever just want to have a delectable little blue dot that'll make you so hard that you could stuff your girl for Valentine's Day? Well, I got the product just for you. And that is Blue Chew. It's delivered to you in a very discreet packaging. So, you know, no one's going to know that, you know, you're trying something new. She will know. And if you want to go like me, like a 12-round boxer, and you want to put rounds on that girl for Valentine's Day, listen, the perfect Valentine's Day, instead of a box of chocolates, a box of Blue Chews. And we got a a discount code just for you. Yes, we do. Use code UNSCRIPTED, and you will get your first month for free. Go check them out, fellas. Don't say I, I didn't tell you so. Change the subject. Talk okay, about anyways, about. let's go to dating horror stories. Bad dates, um, kind of also like a bad Airbnb, because not everything goes, you know, as planned. Have you ever had a date that just went terribly wrong? Yeah, horrible all the time. No, me too. It's kind of crazy, too, because you also read these, like, horror stories online, like on Reddit or whatever. Like, oh, I had this date with someone on Tinder, which I also want to say, guys, People have been using my pictures for fake profiles on dating apps. I've never once had a dating app, so it's not me if you see my picture. Um, Just would like to put that out there. There's been a spike recently in comments about that. But I've read these terrible dating stories about using dating apps, saying that they're getting stalked after using these dating apps. Is that not insane? Yeah, it's the dating app's fault, though. How? Actually, it's the person who's on the dating app's fault. You shouldn't be on the dating app, guys, because they're going to stalk you. How's it the dating app? I'm just playing devil's advocate. Are you kidding? I was asking how. How is it the dating app fault? (laughs) Just use a different app. (laughs) This is literally your argument five minutes ago. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Tell tell the story. What what horror story are you talking about? So, no, I read on Reddit the other day. So, this girl went on a date and this guy was like super creepy like saying all this stuff how he worked at a nuclear um a nuclear plant and if he wanted to he could make the whole thing melt down and he was saying all this and like bragging about it kind of in like a dark way and she kept trying to change the subject and he kept going back to the fact that he could literally make a nuclear meltdown happen and so she after the date she was like very back and forth like should i report this guy because this is like a safety concern for thousands of people around you know the nuclear plant and you know nuclear fallout and all that so she ended up reporting him well he found out and like cyber stalked her found out where she lived and all this stuff and then craziness ensued had to get a restraining order all this and again i don't know maybe this could have been a really creative author writing this or who knows maybe it could have been based upon something but that's scary I feel like with like stalkers and telling like, these dating stories, you could, just depending on how you say it, it changes the ins- the entire story entirely. Like yeah. think of like the TV show You, and how he finds out like what specific things like the girl's doing on a day to day basis and puts himself in a situation to win so he could basically be close. It's the same as stalking, right? Now mm-hmm. take that same exact story and compare it to the movie with Will Smith, Hitch. What is different in that? Literally almost nothing. I don't think I've watched Hitch. You ever seen with uh, uh, what's her name, Eva Mendez, Will Smith, 
Um, who's the fat guy that plays um, Mall Cop? Paul, Paul Bar- Blart. Paul Blart. That's not his real name. Yeah, that's his <laughs> yeah, it's like those three, and he's trying to get like the, the super famous girl. I don't and so, think I ever watched it. So Hitch essentially is like a dating coach, and so what he does is he basically essentially stalks whatever person that uh-huh. the person. So, for example, uh, if we had like a third party here, like some guy, we'll call him Joe, uh-huh. and he needed help getting Anna. Anna was super famous. He calls a guy like me, oh. who plays this guy named Hitch. And what I do is I stalk what Anna does. So I, I don't think I like him. that. Yeah, so basically what he does, he goes, well, she goes to the grocery store at 10 o'clock every day and uh-huh. buys only vegan food. So maybe you should go there and advocate for pro-vegan stuff outside the store so she comes and talks to you. And he does stuff like that. Finds out, like, their schedules. People and, like, didn't think that was creepy? It was. It's a rom-com. It's actually a, one of the most okay, I'm gonna have to. Movies. I'm going to have to put this on my, like, two. I'm pretty sure he won an Academy movies. Award for that. <laughs> Actually, not. I think See, I it. kind of live under a rock. I forget people's names and names of movies. You forgot about Will Smith? No, 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 not him. Paul Blart, dude. I forget his name. But I know who he is. Like, if I see a face, like, I know who you're talking about, but I won't know their names. Same yeah. with movies. Same with songs. Same with like, apps, like Airbnb. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah well, Have any- you been stalked, though? Anyway, so to finish up, no? what I'm talking about with, with this movie is if you take... Depending on how you tell the story, it changes, like, how the outcome of it. Because, like, to some people, you say, like, wow, why would anybody stalk anybody? Well, here's the thing. At the end of the day, it's like, what you consider stalking, what you consider creepy, may not always be uh, what other people consider stalking creepy. For example, like, uh, do you remember, like, when you are in high school, did you ever get asked to the prom? Yes. Okay. I got asked to prom. <laughs> so, how, okay, so... <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but where we go. And, Trust me, there's a few YouTube videos on that. Okay, well, in public school, because we didn't go to private school, uh, in public school, when we get asked to prom, typically what they do is, like, go ask, like, a friend, like, what's their favorite, like, yeah. you know, food candy. or candy, like, yeah. what's their favorite flower, yeah. and they go to the store and they buy that specific one, they bring it to them, but you might not have ever had a conversation with this person, like, mm. you're just doing, like, their yeah. favorite thing, and then in their head, they're like, how the hell did you know this was my favorite thing? Yeah. Some people could look at that, like, you just stalked me and you found out, like, what my no, favorite No, but that's thing is. cute. Is it? But imagine, though, I see what you're saying, like, re- reverse. What if it's, like, a kid that you don't want anything to do with? And now like, they why know do you know my favorite stuff? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you don't know the kid. You don't know nothing about the kid. But now, you, you know what I mean? It just, I think with stuff like that, it, and, uh, you know, this is really playing devil's advocate. I think it's just stuff like that is all dependent on, like, how you look at the situation. And I think, you know, being able to read the room tells a lot about that. You know, mm-hmm. like I think back to like one of the creepiest dating stories like I could ever think of is, uh, you know, this guy who was obsessed with this one girl. Oh, I know personally. Um, <laughs> this is also a prime example of it also happened in the movie Hitch uh, where he took the girl um, to the 9-11 memorial. On the 9-11 memorial, he found... Um, like her great uncle or whatever's name who died in the Twin Towers. She, Wait, this is based on something real? Well, it happened in Hitch too, but this is also a real story that I heard. A, oh. a failed dating stalkerish story. So basically he stalked this girl to the point where he found like her uncle who had passed away in the 9 Memorial there in New York City. He found where his name was engraved on the little outside a statue and went and had it like sketched, you know, how you can like shadow it mm-hmm. onto a piece of paper, had it like shadowed on and she was really upset about it because that same uncle was very sexually abusing to them and their family and he didn't know that. He just assumed like she he thought he was doing something nice. Really nice. You know, something similar happened in the movie. I, just, I don't no, exactly. It's very similar, but he got the idea from that. Was really hoping like it wasn't going to be anything, but that specific family member had a lot of sexual abuse in the family, and it brought out a lot of emotions. Obviously, that date went really, really went south, south. You know, but I think you could come back from something like that too. So no, I, I mean, if you right. didn't know, that's yeah, an accident. That's but a that it also comes down to what do you consider stalking, and what do you consider creepy, and what do you consider you know like you can find a lot of stuff on Google. Yeah. That's true. So, I, I mean, guess he didn't Google. T- he I mean, is Google that public enough. information? I don't know. Yeah. You know. That's true. Maybe they were happy to be rid of him. You know? I mean, you'd be surprised, though. Some things that you think everyone would know would be online aren't. And maybe their family was also trying to hide it, too. So. Maybe. I don't, have you ever been stalked? All the time. What's, <laughs> what's the worst? I want to hear. I mean, like, not to the point where... 
I've never felt like I've been threatened or my life's been in danger. But that's good. Coming from reality TV, specifically dating shows, you're gonna have people that are gonna be emotionally attached to you. It doesn't matter who you are. You're exposed yeah. uh, to an audience that's so big, so broad from across the world that people are gonna like tie themselves to you in some sort of way or another. And so I, when I when I say stalking, it's like. I know personally there's people online that I could go sit and have a conversation with them and they could tell me more about me than I could tell about me. You know? No, that's true. You have a few super fans. Right. They'll tell me where I went to school, a what I got my degree in, you know, like where, you know, my, all the way to my, my first brain deal when I first started TikTok. You know what I mean? I remember. Yeah. And, and it's like, List water. it's like to me, that's really cool. I, I, I don't mind. Like I'm not like a mm-hmm. weird I'm not a weirdo. Like, like, cool. Like, well, I'm really glad I can inspire you. But to some people, they might feel attacked. They might. You're feel, like, that's a little bit too much. Like, yeah. personal bubble, please. Why do you know so much about me? Like, it's yeah. kind of. Like... Here's the thing: if you're putting yourself in the spotlight like that, you gotta expect some people to, you know, go to the extremes and just like know everything. Like, who knows? Maybe they have a trivia game about you. Okay. Like between their friends, what was Chase's first brand deal? What number was Chase on football? What boxing match did he get? Um, did he punch someone so bad that he got disqualified? Right. Even Two Out the Handle made like a, a video game on the Netflix thing. You no play, way. Yeah, you could play as all your favorite people. Oh, I have to look at that. I've yeah. not seen that yet. You know, there's like, there's a lot that goes into it. And I think it kind of goes back to like those dating horror stories. It's like, well, you wouldn't have dating horror stories if you didn't have different perspectives on what you consider a horror story. I think too, there's more horror stories out there because of social media and because of the dating apps, like you were saying, like it kind of creates a lot more, not un, yes, unhealthy environments, but it also creates more opportunity for you to kind of like stalk someone. Cause yeah. everyone puts everything online. Sometimes you don't even realize how much you share. And sometimes you gotta be careful. Well, at the same time too, I also think, um, you know, with, like you said, putting yourself in the public eye, I think being subject to the opinions of, of people, it can take a toll on your mental. So some things you might thought were cute back in the day, you might not think it's as cute anymore because, you know, it gets old. It and gets things annoying. change. Like right. The norms change. Oh, no, I totally get what you're saying with that. All right. And do you ever want to be branded to somebody? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, like insert search bar on TikTok for this clip, Jack and Gap. <laughs> The, like you guys have been together. I knew you were gonna say it's been five years. Chasing the cockroach, chasing Carly. Chasing yeah. Carly, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. Like these are these are things that you work towards not being branded with, but it kind of it comes with the job. It comes with the persona. Sometimes. And everyone, okay. Here's the other thing too. People do this to you too. They also do this to me. When you make one single TikTok that's like very generalized and you just make a TikTok or you do something because you know it's going to get views, but everyone assumes it's about one singular person and you're like, bro, no, it's not that deep. I just made this TikTok just to make well, it. Also, this is a trending sound. You're also a queen clickbaiter, so I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. But no, everyone like thinks there's a deeper meaning to everything. And I'm like, yes, sometimes there is, but most of the time, 80% of the time, I'm just doing something because I think it's funny or I think it's going to, you know. Okay, so outside of stalking, like, what do you think the best way to try to find somebody is if you want to? Today? Be, you have to use apps. You think? I think so. It's just the way the world works. People try to look at it as, like, I don't cringe. want that. Maybe that's why I'm still alone. I don't want to use an app to meet someone. Like, I wish, maybe I'm just old-fashioned in the way, like, I think dating should be. Like, I think, you know, the first date, a guy should, like, plan it. I think that's adorable. That's effort. But I also think, I don't know, like maybe I live in a fairy tale world. I grew up on Disney and Cartoon Network. And I think like, oh, maybe one day I'll just bump into someone. You know, <laughs> love at first sight. Like, I wish it was like that. But like, for real, it's really not these days. And I think to a point, you're right. Social media does have a little bit to do with it. But then it's scary to be a social media kind of you're looking through um, a looking glass whenever you're looking at someone through their social media because not everything is shown. Sometimes they edit things in a certain way to be viewed very different or in a different light. And you meet them in real life and you're like, oh, you're all happy and positive on social media. But then I meet you in real life and you're in a deep, dark, sad pit. Like, I don't know. It's kind of. It's yeah. unfortunate the way yeah. dating is these days. Like, I wish we could just time travel a little bit, you know? Anyway, so back to what I was saying is like, how do you find out? <laughs> Sorry. Like, 
I, uh, I don't know what that had to do with anything, but so like, so how do you find out how to date? I think you need apps nowadays because yeah. uh, the days of, um, it's weird if someone doesn't have a social media too. Like if someone's like, oh no, I'm not on social media. You're like, yeah, they're all, they have some sort of connection. Social no, exactly. I like think whether it's, it's a spam account or not. They, they must be married. If they say they don't have social media, they like, don't bro, we know you got like, you know, Facebook cause you got to keep up with oh, the family. No. At least like LinkedIn. Friends. Come on. You like, have like a TikTok real. because like, that's how people let's be honest. Family. If you don't, if you don't have social media, it'd be very hard to find this podcast right now. Like I bet every single person who's listening to this probably has some form of social media, even if it's Pinterest, like exactly and this goes back to what i say is like i think today the times have changed the days of oh i married my high school sweetheart is it's thin and none i think the idea of that was really cool maybe 10 15 years ago but listen everybody's got instagram everybody's on twitter and snapchat is bigger i just want to live in a fairy tale and everything go right well this is not gonna happen though guys well maybe you should be the next ceo of airbnb and and then and then we could fix that issue (laughs) <laughs> don't look at me like that how do you think you'll meet someone to date I th- i've done i do dating shows i like guess do you, you think know. you'll meet a person on a dating show i don't know i think that my life has been on a big production and entertainment for millions of people for years now i think that um, everybody's got to see my development in relationships from start to finish because my whole life is public and i think mm. Anything that I have to do with my life is going to be public, whether it's the, the girl I choose to bring into it or not, because they become public. And, you know, it comes with its whole set of issues, because for me, I worked really hard to be an individual. I worked really hard to, to branch out outside of these dating shows and build a reputable, um, you know, uh, credentials. And I think that, you know, when I get to that point, whether it was Tua to Handle, whether it was Perfect Match, or whether it was All Star Shore, any of these shows that I've done annually for people to sit and watch, like, okay, there's massive character development. I think when I get to the point of, okay, well, this is the next step of my life, similar to like the Jersey Shore cast, who's now doing family vacations and stuff, then I, then I think that it becomes something that everybody will be able to rally behind but then again my situation is different than most you know Mm -hmm. it's not about it is very unique yeah it's not about what i when i'm gonna find it it's not about when you're gonna find it it's not about when anybody who has some sort of social media can it speaking for the general people who wake up every day and they work their tails off for not as much money as what some more privileged people get to do for less um it's about those people and when are they going to find joy and their significant others and what is 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 their idea of happiness because i feel like and i'm sure you can agree the more you make the more you do the harder it is to find enjoyment in those things mm-hmm. you know it's i remember when i was broke money. i used to have a great time just going you know 16 hour road trip with the boys no literally now i would never do things. that you know yeah you miss out on some things now yeah not but... even just because your schedule or whatever Sometimes it's nicer, just simple things like, I don't know, relationships with everyone changes to once you're put in some sort of spotlight, like they expect certain things that maybe should not be expected. Um, People will use you more often than not. And if anyone like ever finds out like one little teeny little thing about you, oh, who knows who they're going to whisper it to, how they're going to manipulate the certain situation. Like, I don't know. So sometimes I used to say this all the time, too, like even whenever I did start social media, some people would get mad at me because I would always say, I don't want to do social media. I want to live in a private life, <laughs> which obviously that's not going to be the case now. Like, and it, that's fine. And there's pros and cons to everything you do in life. But because of certain things, I don't know, you're put in a unique situations because of the fact that you do social media, especially for you, you're all over Netflix <laughs> and MTV. So like I said, it kind of just goes back to like, it's not about the comparison of what people with platforms can do because you got to speak for the people that don't have the platforms. You got to, it goes for them, their idea of finding a significant other is either going to come from the workplace or it's Mm going to come from uh, your hometown, the home, your hometown, or it's going to come from, um, social media. 
Yeah. Or just like everyday things like, oh, you do a workout class or you go to the gym. Like a lot of people like meet people at the gym. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And having access to that is, is, is tremendous. And, um, you know, to, to topple on top of that, I think that uh, your, your standard of job also changes the quality of person. That no, you're that's so have. true. So, so true. What? Okay. This is very controversial. What do you, th- who do you think should be the bread make, bread winner, bread make, I don't know, I always said that wrong. The bread winner? B- bread maker, is that what it is? It's bread maker, I, right? The bread winner. Oh, bread make, I, the, the I'm person. telling you what okay. the word is. What is it? <laughs> it's bread winner. Yeah, okay. It's I bread help, winner. I always used to say bread maker. Okay, well, listen. That sounds so stupid Listen, to Pillsbury Doughboy, ain't no bread being made around here, right? <laughs> Yeah, who do you think should be the one to take care of things in a relationship? The breadwinner <laughs> <laughs> now has changed. Yeah. Because I think so most people want to be influencers, right? So I think in the regular blue collar work, it's typically the man. Most people work blue collar jobs. Mm-hmm. The men usually have the harder job, work the long hours, make mm-hmm. more of the money. Whereas, you know, the girls' money just is for them and they just do whatever they want for it. Into a conjoined household, but I would say it's probably like 60 40 at best Mm -hmm. you know in the influencer market of like i don't know like tv careers uh social media careers it's probably the girl just because there's more opportunity for the girl to make money than there is for the guy unless you know you're like a superstar guy for the most part guy influencers will probably not make as much as girl influencers but what would you want in a relationship would you want to take care I, it depends on, like I said, it goes back to what I said originally. I was like, it depends on your job and depends on where you are at in your life and what your status is in uh, society. If I don't think it really matters that much anymore because like, I could go to a blue collar worker and they could say to me, well, I'm the breadwinner in my family and I'm making you know, $80,000 a year. My wife's making $40,000 a year. I'm okay, well, bro, like I'm making a half a million dollars a year and my girl's making a million dollars a year. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like, I still make a good enough wage to where if we had to live on one income, I could support it. If Like, you know, because like I'm a firm believer that I think that once you hit like a certain standard of income that you're no longer uh, like there is not a big difference between somebody that makes $10 million a year and makes $15 million a year. Your quality of living is probably the same. See, my thing is, too, if there's one person in in the relationship financially giving more, at least the other person, they could do other things around the house, like taking care of the kid. Who cares if it's the guy or the girl in the relationship? As long as, like, you both are working towards, like, you know, making, like, a happy lifestyle for yourselves. Well, also, now that you say that, it's like, what do you also consider being a breadwinner? Is the breadwinner the person that pays all the bills or the breadwinner that makes more money? That's two different things. Would the person who makes the more money not be paying the bills? That's not necessarily true. See, that's what I was thinking in my head. You could, you could date somebody. Say you were dating the girl. Because you're a guy and you're super old-fashioned, you're paying the rent. You're paying the car bill. You're paying the lights, the electricity. You're buying all the food. You're paying for the vacations. You're doing all of this. But the girl might make more money. You're just saying, just save all your money. I think it's stupid. But, like, you know. Yeah. Well, some people are like that. They're blue-collar like that. It's, no, it's a known thing. I get that. See, I think... If you're together, if you're like in that sort of relationship, as long as you both are like working towards bettering each other's life, you know? Possibly. I think, you know, like I said, I don't believe in the whole like breadwinner, he said, she said thing. I think, you know, when you're together with somebody, it's a conjoined thing. And then that's, that's just how, it, that's just how it is. And, you know, like uh, something that recently happened that's a very hot topic right now is the Ace family's divorce. No, oh, that rocked the internet but does it because it's like it's easy to be get along with somebody and everything's going smooth when you're making millions of dollars but then you have lawsuits you're going bankrupt and there's cheating allegations and it's just like you know who takes the bigger hit there? see with that i think it's an interesting situation too because their entire life their children too were all on this huge massive spotlight they're one of the biggest family channels on social media they put themselves in that spotlight but because of the day and age that we live in too everyone was pro Catherine they're like oh there's cheating rumors no one know no one knows like what is completely confirmed or not what if there's rumors on her side too though like again playing devil's advocate we don't know what was going yeah, on yeah but i think austin's the more yeah, famous one of he, the two of them he possibly yeah possibly is but i mean Catherine's been around for a while she used to date michael b jordan is he in her dms now 
We don't know. Probably not. <laughs> you don't think I, Michael B. Jordan is sliding in on Catherine now that she's single? <laughs> Catherine's got two kids, like yeah, three, a, a three whole, now, and a whole reputation with a with yeah. Her no, that's true. Husband, soon to be ex-husband, like they have like their whole. I, I think it's out. such a big that deal. That A-list though. Michael B. Jordan is. Well, in. I think it was such a big deal though because for the past few years, people have been like, "Dude, stand up for yourself. Your husband's cheating on you. Like, when are you, you gonna like cut ties?" Well, I mean, like I said, like I, I like Austin. Like he's a good, he's a good yeah. friend of mine. I don't have a, you know, I'm not gonna say one or another because like cheating allegations are just allegations, and mm-hmm. you know, like um, if whatever happened within their relationship happened within their relationship, and you know, the whole world is gonna have their opinions on it. But at the end of the day, it's like if two people aren't happy together, you're, just because you're the internet or you're the, mm-hmm. the biased third party, you're not gonna force these two people to yeah. be together. Yeah, and social media too put so much pressure on relationships and whatnot right. because you know you're posting your life you're posting like the private side of things too yeah, so. it's like nobody wants a public relationship nobody wants to deal with that and like they are the definition of why nobody wants a public re- relationship. no literally imagine everything blowing up and burning and <laughs> crashing down you know i mean that's a very drastic thing um but i don't know. think it blow up i think that they have very respectable posts. They posted at the same time. I'm, I'm yeah. glad that they were uh, in collusion with that. I'm glad that they were on the same page. I'm glad that not only did they say, like, they are going to work their tails off to be the best mm-hmm. parents that they can be for the I kids. I think that was good that they because said that. Because it's for the kids. That's what's point. important. I think that, you know, here's, here's a hot take. Is like, I'm on Austin's side. I take Austin's side, you know, 100%. I think he's done nothing but good, especially, um, you know, in my life, in the, in the lives of many people off of social media. I have no no bad queries towards him i don't know what goes on within the relationship that's not on me to speak but you know I, i've met them both i like them both i think they're both nice but i think that you know it's a sad day when you have to post online for other people to give their input on your own marriage yeah that's already the a comments sad day. were harsh too they were and they're like really here's the thing harsh. is like um one door closes another one opens you know some all That's good right. things have to come to an end eventually and i think that they had a good relationship they had a good run they were together for a long time and they I were think, iconic for a bit right and i think that the ace family the best thing for them and those kids in particular is to move on from it yeah i don't i really hope they don't drag it out online just for the sake of the kids but i don't think that uh, why would anybody want to drag something like that online no views that would be really messed up views you're gonna use a That'd divorce really for views up. No, that's what I'm saying. It'd be messed up. Uh, uh-huh. But <laughs> anyways. anyways. Do you have any in the DM stuff? I do have some in the DMs. Real quick, we're going to wrap it up with our in the DM segment where you guys tell us about, you know, some crazy things, some icks. Well, listen, I'm tired of the off. tags and the stitches on TikTok, too. Like, Chase is an idiot. Like, how could he tell? Oh, why is Chase gas? Like, listen. I'm just the, uh, I'm going to tell you how it is. You're going to tell me that you logged into their Amazon Alexa or you snuck Chase into the Chase just has an opinion about everything is what or, he's saying. Or you stole their phone or whatever and you found out that they were liking this picture talking. Like, listen, all I said was if you go digging for something, you're probably going to find it. Like, I'm sorry about it. Like, this is how it is. Okay. The first ick, though, was I went on a first date and I forgot my wallet, but the girl stormed out and left because of that. Should a girl always assume that the guy will pay for the food? I mean, I'm old fashioned. I think this is a, it's a safe assumption that the, depending on where you are in life, for the most part, for the majority guys, not every time, but you know, it's probably going to be the guy that has to pay for it. Like for the most part. Yeah. With I that being said, date. if the girl asked the guy to go to like a coffee date and the guy's like, yeah, sure, I'll go. Don't be upset when you're the one paying for the coffee. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I think, buy no white chocolate milk is for no girl I don't like. I think, here's the thing. I think first date, yes, the guy should pay. But if you guys have been going on a gazillion dates, like, those bills rack up. Like, at least offer to pay if you're a girl. Like, come on. Oh, right? Or, like, even if it's not a date. Like, I remember I paid for Moses' birthday dinner, and she was so raving about this <laughs> French <laughs> restaurant. And I was I like, yeah, prices. let's go there. And I got like five bites of food and a half a glass of wine. And they bring me the bill. I'm like, you know what? It's her birthday. I'm going to pay for this. And I whip my card in there. All of a sudden, I see an $850 charge. Yeah, that <laughs> And happens. I was still hungry. I thought that was the appetizer. Yeah, that was kind of my fault. For, for a Michelin thing. star. We, there, weren't, there weren't prices on the menu. We didn't really know, to be fair. But 
Yeah. My credit card knew. My bank account knew. Yeah, and you know what? It was a great memory, so thank you for that, Chase. But okay, next ick is every single time I am with her family, she brings up her ex, and the mom just rams him. What do you think about that? It just completely turns First me of all, off. pause. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't really... Ain't, ain't nobody getting rammed by their mom. <laughs> Relax. Second of all, second of all, here's the thing, you know, if the ex was a relevant person in that person's life, if you had somebody in your life for like 10 years or so, it's similar to like Jack when I wanted to buy the YouTube channel. And yeah. at the end of the video, he goes, tell the fam I said hi, as if they give a crap about this kid, whatever. Yeah. It's more of like a kick in the nuts. But, you know, if this kid was a significant role in the life for X amount of years and, the, and you do something that brings it, like since... For example, if you never snowboarded, you started snowboarding with your ex and you take your family snowboarding and they go, oh, well, you started snowboarding when you were dating this yeah, girl. You so can't be upset about that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You tied that together. No, that's fair. I don't think that's an ick. I think that you can find new hobbies or you could get over it. Like, yeah. That's just really what it is. I think more so it's, it's weird if you're like, oh, remember when? And then you just went yeah. down memory lane. Like, mom or ex or girlfriend or whoever. Yeah, definitely like, read the room. Why would you do that? Read the room, <laughs> like, for sure. Mm, that's a little bit awkward. Yeah, whatever. Read the room. But okay. Another ick is uh when we're apart, everything is fine, but the thing is he continually blows up my phone asking me itineraries and what is going on. Can I not get some space? Itineraries for what? I don't know, that's just what it said. I like itin like what are you doing? So, so every time they're apart, that he's always texting him. Yeah, and being like, "What are you doing? Like, why aren't you telling me what what's going on? You know, like, what's your plan for today?" I, t I definitely take her side on this. I think that in a relationship, it's very important to have your own life. I'm somebody that is avid about being individuals because I think that's the reason you were attracted to each other in the first place. Mm -hmm. Once you lose individuality in a relationship, that relationship is torched. Also, there's no, like, mystery. And if you already know everything about everyone, like, that's boring. I'm sorry. Right, well, you think I want to come back at the end of the day after spending all day with you and then recap on the day? Yeah, so morning by 10. This ain't yeah, spark notes. This ain't spark <laughs> notes. This isn't a summer. I ain't writing no essays. I'm not proofreading nothing. I don't want to review the day at yeah. the end of the day yeah, just no to do another you. day and review it again. We ain't taking no tests on this. Yeah, no I want to go live my life and then I'll, hey, look, guess what happened today? Now you got something to talk about. Exactly. You no, know. that's true. That's true. But that was the last one. Okay. Well, sick. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for tuning to the number one podcast in your world. We're your host, Chase Damore. And Gabrielle Moses. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.